Something about the Tucker just consumes you, you know? How you doing? My name's Rich Oxlade. I was one of the last owners of Tucker 39, me and my partner, Ed Monroe. We owned it for seven years. Uh, Ed and I have been partners for, for years. So we had the shop together. Our shop was in Hermosa Beach. It was called the Corvette Group. Uh, I lived in Manhattan Beach, the next beach over. We had a custom shop for about 12 years there. And we did antiques and customs. And, and uh, we ended up with uh, a lot of cars from the 30s, 40s, and 50s that we started a rental company to the, for the movies. So, and that's when we, that's right before we found the Tucker. So after we got that, that kind of sealed the deal. I found it through an ad in the LA Times sitting in my office. It was a two line ad with 1948 Tucker with an Oregon number. I was the first one who called. Talked to the people up there. I sent them $5,000 down to hold the car. My partner and I flew up there, bought the car. We paid 40,000 cash for it, I'll tell you right now. When I brought it back to our shop, people thought we were effing crazy for spending that much money on it. What a piece of junk. You know? It was the original Tira, but it was rat, rats ate it, you know. It, uh, it was all there. We found all the parts, even the trim, everything was there. We didn't have to make, we didn't have to make anything up for the interior. So, and uh, when we redid it, we thought at the time, there's nothing we, we did to it to take away from it, so we upgraded it a little bit. We put uh, bolsters and buttons in the seats. We added leather to the doors. We dressed it up a little bit. We gave it a little class. Not that it didn't need any more, but you know, that was the way we did things in our shop. So. Did a total restore on the engine, total restore on the suspension system. Uh, we went over top to bottom, took everything apart. Uh, like I said, we put 3,000 hours into the body alone. Um, we actually, at the time, talking to a lot of the older gentlemen in the club and never driven a Tucker, telling us the, how the car handled. And it was a little swooshy. So with our minds, we said, well, let's put air shocks in the front. And then we made up these special dual gussets to hold double shocks in the rear that we put on the car. And it worked out great. The car it took the sway away and, you know, actually before uh, we gave the car up to the Smithsonian, we actually took it out to a big lot and tore it up. My, my tire might be about a half a pound low on air. Yeah? It might be. Well, let me do a search. Hey, just try it one more time, yeah. Search find out. I mean, when you see the car, you can actually tell the difference. Mike, you've been there, you know what it looks like, yes. you know? So, yeah, so, and it was good. We, uh, we put about the eight to nine coats of lot, uh, clear on it. We painted it in lacquer back then, and the paint job still looks fantastic. Well, after we got the car completed, we had, uh, we did a show, and then we did the first car show in Denver. They've been trying to get a Tucker there for I don't know how many years. We did a car show there. And they actually paid us five grand to have the car there as a crowd drawer. It was right in the center of the convention center, and uh, they put it right next to a Tetra, because the Tetra looked, the Czechoslovak and Tetra looked like a Tucker. Three headlights, rear engine. So it was all interesting, and, and after that, we, we started, we had shows set up. And uh, to be honest with you, we had a little trouble in our shop. Ah, money laundering, you know? Uh, they said there was no way to tell what money was real and what money was tainted in our business. And at the time, we were 150% legal. So uh, when we uh, when the, the, our trouble went down um, and they, they confiscated uh, most of our cars, we had a hangar where we kept all our, 
cars that we rented out. Uh, I was doing, a show, me and my woman were doing a show in Coronado Hotel for an inspir, insp, inspirational speaker. And they wanted to have the Tucker there because they showed the movie and they wanted the people to come out and have the Tucker there. So me and my lady were doing a show there. We got the call from my partner's wife saying that the feds were here. They just took the six cars that were at his house and they were looking for the Tucker. I go, okay, thanks, I'll see you later. So after the show, we took the Tucker. Uh, we had a trailer, a custom trailer with Tucker 39 on it. I peeled all the vinyl tape off it, all the Tuckers that said Tucker, and thought of a place I could keep the car. The car ended up in Compton, California, at a good friend of mine's, where I knew nobody would look for it there until we figured out what the hell we were going to do. one point we said you know if we burn the car it'll still be a tucker but it would take all our work and time and effort out into it we talked about it for a week but the car was so gorgeous we couldn't do it we couldn't do it and then after driving it we go no it will take our chances you know and that's what happened so after we figured out we actually uh, uh, made a deal to lessen the effects of the of the arrest the, the tucker would ease it up we, we, that's when the deal was made and that's when we gave it up so yeah. the car was confiscated all our, our car the feds came in and confiscated a lot of stuff from us all the cars and the car was going to be sold and if it wasn't for the tucker club especially russ burnell and a couple of the higher members up there helped save the car um, Russ Burnell's good friend was the curator of the Smithsonian at the time. They had it in the warehouse. They went to San Diego, and the gentleman walked in and told us, and, and Ernest said, that car is part of American history. It's not going anywhere. It's going to the Smithsonian. That's how it got there. And, you know, and like I said, we're, we're, not, we're proud of whatever we did, you know. We weren't bad guys. We were good guys, and we were enthusiasts. And we're car guys, and uh, I'm still glad to be involved with her. You know? Oh, that car means 20 times more than it did back then because it's still there, and the aesthetics of meeting you and your family and Rob Ida and all the and all the Tucker enthusiasts and how long I've been involved with you guys and knowing what's going on. It just it just it's like a it's like a dream, it's like a dream come true. You know, even though we don't own it anymore and we don't have the pleasure of it, I still feel like it's it's mine. Just thinking about it, just uh, it's, going back over all these years, just, uh, yeah, you know, so, so just to make sure, I think I, I think we did the right thing the way we did it, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, we tried our best at the time to save the car, to keep it, and uh, so, but it worked out to the better. It's been, how long has it been now? 20, uh, 80, 87, uh, 35 years. There she goes. There she goes. Thank you.